It's a fresh canvas to build, to build and shape our universes in whichever form we see fit. The power of Grayskull is ours. All right, so just a spicy little intro. So hopefully at the end of the last section, you played a little bit around with the API and you saw that the changes were reflected positively uh, and accordingly when you would use the API endpoint, um, hello, which is the name, right? And then we receive this JSON data and we see that in live time, we're able to actually build our app locally. That's the point, that's the point. Now, if we wanna have a more direct response and see that in action, we don't have to work with the API. We could go directly to the index.tsx. Now, if we go to this index.tsx right now, what is all of this? Well, all of this is basically everything that we're seeing, and let me make this bigger, in the homepage, in the homepage over here. Since we're just building a single page application with a single generator, we don't need to separate too many different pages off the bat in terms of our component structures and building. So what I mean by that is right now the index is being separated from the app itself. What I want to do is build from scratch, not build from the template that's given directly, since I want to show you a few things under the hood as we go along. So what that really means for us is that we don't even want, we don't even need this index.tsx file at all. So let's go ahead and just delete this file. So I'm going to go click on delete, move to trash. Now you might be freaking out like, oh, whoa, whoa, Clarion, what's going on? Because now if you check the page uh, in our browser, we're going to see 404, this page cannot be found. And you can say, well, Clarion, did you just break the whole app? And I would say, yes, but sometimes you need to break code in order to make code, all right? Very important lesson in life. Because by deleting the index, we're redirecting our architecture now back into the app. And now the app becomes our most important page we want to build with, all right? And this is how we want to start. And then we can extrapolate on different pages. But now that we've done this, the question changes. But now that we delete the index, our configuration of the application needs to be modified. Because remember, the underscore app is essentially all of your pages. This ties in all the pages together. We do this and we can bring in our components props and our page props. Since we're going to build everything from our app page, we can omit the index. Now I can show you this in action by adding empty tags. So let me just make this larger so you can see. And you have to code along, by the way, to make this work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap our component in empty tags that I'm going to put, that I'm going to type some text. I'm going to say, this is the home page. So this is HTML. And what we're doing here is we're creating a function. So we're using functional components uh, in Next.js. So we have a function that's a component. The component of the function is the fact that it has an uppercase. So it's uppercase called app. So the name of this component is app. This is our application component. And what it's returning is basically props with statically typed app props. So this is with TypeScript, and we're going to talk about props and why that's important later on. So you don't have to worry about that. And HTML. And we, in order to return HTML, we have to wrap everything in tags. So we return, this is the home page. This is just some text. If I save this now, and we go back to Chrome, now, if I, if I were to save this and check on Chrome, it's not going to work because currently we do not have any page properties set up. So I would have to delete this component page properties and save this now. And if we go to Chrome and look and we take a look now, we're going to see something very different. We see we've got all these lines. So this is CSS working in the background. And at the top left, you should see this is the home page. Okay, doesn't look very nice, but what we've done here, architecturally speaking, is very important for building out our project. We've removed our index page, and now we are designating our app page to, to be the page that's gonna hold our code initially. And then as we scale that code out, as we develop that code, we could then segment it into other various components. And working this way will make more sense. The key takeaway here is that architecturally speaking, we've reconfigured our code by simply removing a file and then shifting the weight on, shifting the weight of rendering. This very well may sound confusing at first, but if you continue forward, 
for especially if you're new. But if you continue forward, it will make sense as we develop. So let's stop here. And in the next lesson, let's actually take this homepage that we have and clean it up and build it out a bit so that we can have a working form that looks something closer to this with an input, a button, and a place to generate images. All right, and we can center everything out as well. So let's go ahead and stop here. And in the next video, we'll continue forward. Okay, great work. All right, so we're back in action. And this may not look like the best looking app you've ever seen, but let's take the time now to fix this up and build out some inputs so that we can get something closer to what would resemble what it is we're building. All right, so right now we just have a return statement that says this is the home page. What we're gonna do is replace that with an H2 tag, so a second header tag. And we're gonna say create images with your mind. All right, that's going to be the name of our app. So we could save that and we have a hot module reload. So we don't have to reset the server every time. If we check our Chrome now, we're going to see create image. If we check our browser now at our local host, we're going to see create images with your mind. Beautiful. Amazing how when you save, it updates automatically with Next. Now, the next thing I want to do is I don't want to use these global styles. So what we're going to do is remove the import for the global styles and save and when we do that, we're going to get rid of those annoying lines that were mildly tripping me out previously. <laughs> okay, so now we have a blank canvas. And what we did by removing the import, by the way, is we disconnected these styles. Because some of these classes aren't classes. Some of them are actually just root, media, and body. So they will automatically start updating changes to uh, to the given body and tags when you just bring it into the page. So by removing that, we get rid of those lines and that background and any other type of media responsiveness that would be attached with the template. All right, the next thing I wanna do is create a input where we can actually type the description because what does our application do? Well, essentially you can type any, you can create any type of image that you can think of by adding description into this text box, right? Like we can say a giraffe, drinking coffee at a rock concert, right? So we could type this in and we can click on generate image and voila, we have a giraffe <laughs> that's drinking coffee at a rock concert. Amazing, amazing. So we need to have a text box where you can do that. So when you're building an app from scratch, my advice is to build the skeleton first. Don't build the functionality. First, you build the, out, the exterior then you get the interior to work. All right, so we're gonna make a text area tag because text area is a self-closing tag that allows us from HTML. And by the way, this is HTML. We're typing HTML in a TypeScript file and TypeScript is JavaScript. So it might be a little confusing at first, but that's what's fantastic about JSX. And it'll make more and more sense the more you use it. We're essentially able to use both JavaScript and HTML together, all right? So this is HTML, we're gonna have a text area, and inside the text area, you have attributes and properties. Um, one thing we can use is classes. So in React, instead of classes, they're called class name with an uppercase N. Now classes are things that we can build to style out whatever it is we wanna style on our website. So we're gonna build, it doesn't exist yet, but we're gonna make a style called app input which then we're going to access through a CSS file that we will customize ourselves in order to style this text area. And if that's all confusing, it just means that we're gonna make this class that's then going to style the text area later on and it'll make sense. Now there are other inherent, inherent attributes that come with text area besides class name. We have placeholder. Placeholder is the placeholder for the text. Now, for now, uh, and, oh, and by the way, we should use double quotes here. You can use single or double quotes in JavaScript, but for outer strings, it's recommended to use double. So we're gonna say create any type, and this is a string of image, and a string is just a set of characters uh, sequentially in, wrapped in quotations, image. So you can think of with as much added description as you would like. So this is a placeholder. So if I save this and we go back to our app now, take a look. Now we have our header, create images with your mind, and you should also see now this text area. 
And if you click at the bottom right, you can be able, you should be able to expand it. And if you expand it, you should, you'll, you'll see the placeholder text. That's why it's not in a weightier font, right? It's in a grayer type font. And this is create, and it says what? Create any type of image. And if I start typing, it's going to replace the placeholder with the actual text. So I can say cat uh, jumping up and down, up and down. Now, of course, there's no button to input this. And even if there was a button, we don't have the API or the functionality yet. But I just want to show you that the text area is working. Great. Now, what else do we need for our skeleton? Well, the other thing we're going to need is a button. So I'm going to make a button which will actually have an open and close because in the middle of our button tag is usually where we can name the button. All right. And here we can just say generate image for now. So we can save that. And let's take a look. And OK, this may not look like much here. Let me go ahead and refresh. But now the beauty is that we have all the things we need, right? We have our title, we have our text input, and we have our button. Sure, it doesn't work. And sure, it doesn't look all nice and flashy and modern like our app does yet. But if you really strip everything apart and think about what are the key components that build this app, well, those are the three key components, right? The image generator, which will generate the image, the button, and the text input that's going to hold the prompt for the description, which is going to send that information into th through our API, through our programming interface, into the OpenAI machine learning model prediction, which is then going to which is then going to generate the response for us, right? And that's the doll E2. So hopefully there's some bells going off because, yeah, this may not look like the other thing, but if you think about it, what we've just accomplished is actually pretty epic. And we're doing it with great technology in a non-biased way. We're not letting our technology dictate to us how we need to architecturally build the design. We're saying, wait a minute, we got what we wanted. Now we're modifying and we're building with the power of the template. So it saves us a ton of time with the power of great technology and we're taking control of the architecture. And that's what would take you from a junior. And if you start thinking that way, that's how you move from junior to a higher level type of developer. So that's why I think it's important to stop and consider these things as well. Um, so let's stop here on that note. And in the next lesson, let's style this out a bit so it looks nice. Before we begin, my favorite part of the journey, which of course is functionality. Okay, good stuff. I'll see you there. Bye-bye. This is a delicious cup of coffee. I can't wait until my favorite band, The Strokes, starts to play, said the giraffe. Okay, welcome back. So we're slowly getting there. I was just having a little fun, uh, didn't realize we were recording yet. But take a look, right? We've got our header, we've got our text input, and we've got a button. If we click on the button, it does nothing. None of this is connected to anything, not to each other, and it doesn't look good. So the first thing I want to do is actually create some style so this application looks better. We're not going to do everything with the animations because that's just, I don't want to get too lost, but let's at least get this looking nice enough that we're ready to do some functionality moving forward from there. So what I'm going to do is the first thing here, when I come back to this, there's no real formatting going on. So I'm going to highlight everything, right click and type and click on format document. And this is going to format our indenting to make it look a little bit better. All right. Now, I put this on two lines for you with the placeholder holder, but you can move it on to one. It's just so you can see it better. Otherwise, this is pretty good for now. The next thing I want to do is I want to wrap all of this in another class name. Like we created a class name for our text area, which we haven't built yet. And that's just for the component of the text area. But I also want to control everything that's happening in the header, the text area. And this is what you call in HTML a div. Right, so you can have a div here. I can even rename this uh, open tag div. And then if I do that, I got to name the close tag div. And then from div over here, I could actually have a class name. And we're going to create another class name and I'm going to call this the main part of the app or app dash main. And I'm getting an error because the slash, when you open and close a tag in HTML, needs to go before you type the name of the tag. See how button closes before, h2 closes before, etc. But of course, when you have a self-closing tag, like text area, you put it afterwards. Otherwise, it will never run text area. Okay. So if I save this and we go back to the app, we should see that it's still working. Good. 
All right, the next thing I want to do is build styles with CSS, cascading style sheets. So in order to build styles, I'm going to have to make a new file. And in, and I'm going to make a new file in the pages folder. So I'm going to right click on pages, create new file, and I'm going to call it app uppercase dot CSS. We're going to use uppercases for our styling pages. All right, well, what do we want to have? Well, I want to have a background. Without even using the tags we've created, we can directly affect the body of our HTML, so the body of our website, by just typing in body. And then whatever I want to add here, for example, if I want to change the font, I could say font family, and that's going to change the font family of the entire body. I could change it, let's say, to Poppins, and if there's no Poppins, then let's use sans serif. What's the next thing we want? Well, we have this really cool background. This is a linear gradient background. I say it's linear gradient because it's changing colors from left to right, right? We have like an orange over here, then a different shade of orange, then another shade of orange, then another shade of orange. We can do this by actually just defining the properties in CSS. And the other thing I want you to notice is when it's linear, it's not going from left to right straight. It's going at a 45 degree angle. Follow my mouse, 45 degree angle. So we can even dictate the angle of how we want our background colors to change. And it's very easy. Let me show you how it's done. So I can go into Visual Studio Code, and above our font family, we can say background, like this. Oops, if I can spell. All we have to do is say background, and if we want to use linear gradients, we can say linear gradient. And here we have access to different attributes. The first one would be the degree. So if we want a 45 degree, I can type in 45 degree like this. Let's make this bigger so you can see. And after that, it's just a question of the colors. So if we want different shades of oranges, what I could do to cheat, I could say orange, right? Now, if I want to get specific, I can highlight over orange. If I want a darker shade of orange, I can go dark like this. And now it's going to translate it into a hex code. This would be our first shade of orange. Now, if we want to slowly change our shades of orange, I could then just copy this four times, right? I can say one, uh, two, three, four. All right. Now, each one, if I want to create like different shades and create this kind of idea that the shades are changing colors, I could go to each one and just modify it slightly. So if I want to slowly get lighter. I can bring it down, make it a little lighter here. Then on the third one, I could bring it down, make it even lighter over here, closer to yellow. And on the fourth one, we can even go pretty yellow. I can go all the way down to here. All right. And let me see if I did this right. So we've got the first one. Oops. Okay, I did it twice here. So the second one I didn't do properly. So the second one's the same one. So I'm gonna to wanna to bring it down just a little bit here. And this one we're gonna bring down a little bit more like this. And let's save this and have a look. So if I go back to the back, Google Chrome, you see that it's not working. So I believe that I forgot, see I'm getting an error here. So. Once you finish a line of code in CSS, you have to put a semicolon to indicate that the expression's over to move on to the next uh, attribute, the next property key pair value. So I don't need a comma here either, so I'm gonna remove this comma, and then I'm going to add a semicolon. And now if I save and we go back to Chrome, it's still not gonna work. And that's because there's one more thing we need to do to do in order to hook up the CSS to the app. We have to go back to our app file and we actually have to connect the connect the style code to the app code because right now they're not talking to each other. All right. So if we really want to see this in action, like the, the font change and the background color, they need to be hooked up. So all I have to do to hook it up now is just import the file so that the file's code can be connected to this. So I can say import and then app.css. So if we save this now and we go back, take a look. All right, so now we have linear gradients. And if you take a look from left to right, you're gonna see that we have our colors changing. Fantastic. So now we've hooked up our CSS to our TSX, right? Our TypeScript of JSX. And if all these acronyms are confusing, all it really means is that we've hooked up our code for our cascading style sheets is our CSS to our main application, which can now listen. And we don't need to bring it in specifically because in our CSS, we're taking the universal tag of body. 
right? The class is body, so it's not the same as a class name as we're gonna see in the next video. So we'll stop here in the next lesson. Let's actually get the colors and get things centered so it all looks nicer and something closer to this. Okay, fantastic work. I'll see you in the next video where we can continue giving our application a makeover. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Okay, so we've managed to hook up our CSS to the front end of the application, and we're getting this linear gradients uh, and a little bit more control over the fonts, over the fonts. The next step would be to center this stuff out, uh, I would think, and just to get it to look a little bit more nicer in terms of the responsiveness and its flexibility uh, and the centering. So we're going to go back to the code, and we're going to go back into our app.css, and we're going to code out this um, app main class, right? We created an app main and an app input. So let's code both of these out. So we're going to start with the main. So I'm going to say dot app main to indicate that this is a class we've created. We're going to use the dot. And let me just get rid of that. And we're highlighting because I need to put some code in. So we're going to use the display. And we want to be responsive, so we're going to use the value of flex, which creates flexibility for our display. And from there, we can actually create, we can decide the direction we want to be flexing. So we want to have columns, right? Because we care about the column of the direction. And we want to center everything. So we're going to use align items to the center. And let's also create a font color. So we're going to get a different type of font color. So we could just use color, and color is going to create the font color for us. And I can select blue-violet, and if I want to get darker, I can then highlight over, and we'll get a hex where my selection is. So I'm just making it a darker purple, a darker type of violet. Let's save this and go back to our Chrome. And if I refresh now and I zoom out, all right. So now what we see here is we've centered things out a bit. So everything's centered. It's not quite where we want it to be, but it's getting better. It's getting better. Now, we also want to work on this app input and this H2 as well. So let's keep going. So I'm going to want to have uh, the H2, all of our headers that have the second, that are the second type headers. We're going to also make sure that our text is aligned to the center. We're going to create a little bit more margin. So we can specify where we want the margin. So we're going to use it to the bottom. And I'm going to use a unit of measurement, which is the root M. So that's REM, which creates a relative type of measurement, which is great for a responsive response, for a responsive element, as we're going to see. And we can even add a little bit of opacity. So it looks a little bit like it's blending into the background, which is always a nice modern effect. And we've got a bit of text shadow. Um, and here we can add text shadow of, of where we want the amounts in our dimensions. So one pixel each, and then we could also put the colors. So let's say we want white, we can save this. And if we check now, take a look, we now have a bit of a text shadow and we have a cool color for our header, which is getting better, getting better. And we also have a bit more padding. All right, now let's do this, something similar for our input. So I'm going to go into dot app dash input. And we created the input as well, right? If I check in app TSX, we're gonna see that we have the main app and then we have app input over here. So good, so for our input, let's define a relative width to the background. because We wanna be responsive, so we're gonna have a relative width, we can put 35% for now. Uh, the height, we can use our REM responsiveness. We can try 10 REM. And of course, we can always test it, see how it looks, and come back and modify it. Opacity, we'll do the same thing. Add a little opacity. The opacity works from 0 to 1, right? So 0.5 is half opacity. Uh, margin to the bottom as well. We'll do the same thing. We'll add a little bit of 1 REM. Uh, let's add a little bit of padding. Let's do some font size. Because right now, I don't think the size was great. So maybe let's try 1.2. We'll have a relative font size. Uh, and let's create an input around the text area uh, border. So we can have a border around our input. 
and we can say one pixel. We can choose whether we want it to be solid or transparent. We're going to make this solid. And we can even choose the color of the border. So why don't we just go to light gray. Again, if you want to get specific, you can always highlight it over. Uh, we can even add a radius to curve it up a little bit. Let's do that for five pixels. Let's not have a resize, so we'll set this to none. And we'll create more shadow as well. So we could use the box shadow attribute. And box shadow then is going to have uh, each side dimension. So we're going to say, let's say 2px, 2px, then 5px. And let's also do light gray. Let's see light gray. And you know, let's change it a little bit. So it's a little different. We'll go a little darker. Let's save this and let's take a look. All right, so this is looking a little bit nicer. This is looking a little bit nicer. We, we have different linear gradients. Semi-opacity, which is actually just creating color blends, which are nice. We see our placeholder. We have, uh, we've centered everything out. We have a nice background. The next thing I'd want to fix maybe is this button, right? If we take a look, we take a look, we have a cool looking button over here, much nicer than what we have going on over here, which is just a generic button input. So let's go ahead and work some magic for this button to do a little bit more CSS. So we're going to have a button, which um, let's just do the button first. And, uh, first. So let me go back here and notice how I'm not using a dot because we're going to affect all the buttons. All right. So we're going to have a padding. Uh, let's say one REM, two REM. We'll add a background color. Let's move with a light blue. Um, the color of the text can be white. You can add a border to the button. It's always nice. We'll make it 2px solid. And here I can just put in a, a different blue shade over here. Look, it even shows you. So if I type in 33, 182, and 232, that should give us a blue. Yeah, there it is. We want a border radius as well. So we're going to say five pixels, we'll do something similar to what we did before. Same thing with the font size, 1.2 REM. Now, when we're over the button, um, we can actually change the cursor. Let's make it a pointer. And let's have a margin to the bottom so that there's a little bit more space. Because remember, underneath the buttons where we're going to, is where we will want to generate our image, or our images, sorry. And so we're going to want a little bit of space there as well. And we can also have a transition so that when we click on the button, there's a little bit of a transition happening. And we can use all 0 0.2 seconds. And we can use the ease in out. So transition is a shorthand property. Um, and the ease out basically specifies a transition effect that's going to have either slow start, then fast, then end slowly. And this is nice because it just creates more of a smooth effect with the same speed from start to end. So we say ease in and out, and then we can have define the speed to be 0 0.2. So this really has to do with the timing of the button. If I save it now and we take a look at our button, we see we've got this nice button, and we see now that when we hover over it, our pointer, our cursor, our cursor turns into this pointer, which is cool. Now, we can't really see the transitions yet because we haven't created any type of hovering effect. What we want to do, essentially, is have it so that when we hover over it, we're going to see the background color change. So I can actually do that with the hover effect over button. So I can do button hover underneath button. And here, if we want the background color to change, now this is going to be all the properties that change when we hover over. So if I put in green here, it's not going to change the button to green. It's just going to change the color. So let's say we want a nice dark green to show that we're transitioning. Um, we're going to want the color to be maybe, let's say, Alice blue. And we can even have the border slightly change too. So we can say 1px solid and RGB. Let's go with like a darker gray. And here, let's play with this gray a little bit. And let's go a little bit colorful. Try something like that. All right, 134, 139, 138. So I save this now and we go back again. 
when I hover over the button, we're changing colors. And the green is kind of like a green light, so the user experience is positive, meaning like, okay, this is working for me. If it was red, that would be an indication that it doesn't work. This is a really good example of how UI and UX commingle together. Something as intuitive as a color change can be indicative of the experience for the user. All right, so this is user, so UX and UI is very different, but sometimes they, but of course they, they can and do overlap. Um, and it's important to understand the differences and how that works with each other. Now, if you take a look, this is a 0.2 second change and it eases in and it eases out the same way. If I were to switch this from 0.2 to let's say two seconds and we go back, you have to count two seconds before it changes. You see that? And then when I hover out, now that's too, too long. If I did one second and we saved, again, this is taking too long. This one second is affecting my user experience. It's too slow. People have very, very low uh, attention spans, including myself. So 0.2 seconds is perfect. Boom, 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 boom. So it might be something that's not so obvious, but very, very important. All right, so that's looking a lot better for me. Now this light blue is maybe too light. So actually, let me go back into the button and make this a darker shade. So let's try that and make it a darker shade. So. Set a light blue, I'm gonna bring it down. You can bring it somewhat darker. Let's try this, let me save here. This is cooler. And then we go from gray to green. Very nice. And now our app is starting to come along. It's really starting to come along. I mean, in terms of aesthetics, right? I mean, this looks way better. We have a nice font. We have a nice space with our input, input, we have shadowing, we have UX experience. Now, of course, if I click on the button, nothing happens, but this looks, but this is looking good. Not only is it looking good, it has the skeleton it needs in order to now add the functionality for it to work well. Um, so we're getting closer, we're getting closer and hopefully you see that and that's getting you excited for the next steps moving forward. All right, so let's stop here and in the next lesson, I would say this is a good time for us to take a break from all this styling and move back to the core reason why we're here, which is to really get the functionality working. How can we build an application that could hook up into Dolly and generate images with our minds, right? With just this text natural language. Fantastic stuff. We'll stop here, get some coffee, and whenever you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.